Hello friends, my name is Dara. If this is your first video here, I do weekly videos on reading or writing and it's been a while since I vlogged. I haven't put a vlog up since last month and hold on. Sorry, that's my Minecraft cat in the background. Uh, she wants some attention. Um, luckily, there's a creeper sitting outside my house so I'm gonna let her go out and chase it away. But I wanted to do an intro real quick because I am about to start reading the Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. So this book has been on my radar all year. I really want to read it. I don't know why, but for like this past month or so, first off, I know I am white, but dang, that was too exposed. Okay. Um, but anyways, I've been like on a historical fiction kick. Like that's literally all... I've been reading. So, I don't know. That's just what I'm in the mood for. Uh, I kind of feel like fantasy too. I can feel that like wanting coming back. You know, I'm in the mood. It's coming back. But I feel like rereading old favorites. So if you want to see any vlogs for that, let me know. But this video will be historical fiction and it'll be the four winds by chris and hannah so uh there will be no buddy read this month with my sisters but and you'll see last month it kind of fell through so this time for now i'm just reading it alone and you guys do know my videos are not normally spoilery like i usually keep it pretty vague but when i'm doing a video on just one book most of the time now i will be doing spoilers like i will tell you how i feel about huge events if you haven't read this and you want to uh, and you don't want to be spoiled i don't watch this video um and this is a super popular book right now so there might be some of you out there who want to read this on your own uh so i do apologize but after you read it definitely come back and let me know if you feel the same way i do um but it is actually almost time for andrew to come home from work so i will be starting dinner soon i you're okay I do plan to do physical, sorry, but he has allergies or something. I do plan to do physical and audio because I just have a lot going on as usual. I know it's summertime, it's supposed to be like a break time, but it's not. So if you don't know what this book is about, it is about a woman. I do know, pretty sure the main is... Yeah, the main character's name is Elsa, right? So, and this book takes place in the 20s in Texas. So, you guys know there's the Great Depression and the Great Dust Bowl that hit the Midwest. And she has to decide whether or not she wants to stay in Texas and fight for her family's land, if it's worth it, uh, or if she wants to follow uh, a lot of other people who are going to California and trying to make it out there where there's not a drought. I mean, there's still a depression, but at least in the mid, like the, the Dust Bowl was in the Midwest. And so she has to decide which risk is greater, which one is more worth it, what she feels is best for her and her family. So I have heard lots of people hate this book. I've heard lots of people love it. Uh, basically what I've gathered is if you're a Chris and Hannah stan, you will love this book. I love Kristen Hanna. I've only read one of her other books. I have like four others that I want to read of hers, of course, but since, actually I have no reason to pick this one. I just really wanted to read this one. So that's what I'm starting with next. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start this. It is a random Wednesday. I just felt like vlogging. So I'm going to go ahead and start this and let's get this reading vlog going um let me know if you're gonna read this too and you know we'll chat about it in the comments so i will check back in with you at my first update hello everyone it is time for my first update it is much later it's 11 o'clock at night um i didn't end up getting the audiobook because i don't have any more audible credits but it's actually is working out great i'm loving reading this um I decided to go ahead and tab it. I'm almost 60 pages in, I'm like 57, and I'm really enjoying this book. Like, 
I think it's gonna be a five star, which seems crazy to already project, but I just, that invested for some reason. I don't know if it's just her writing, because as you guys know, uh, The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna was one of my favorite books of the year. And it, I just I love her writing I think is part of it um, but also well but also I, I personally haven't read any books set in this era um, I, that's not true like the seven and a half or the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo right you know what I'm talking about that book um, took place in this time but it was on Hollywood and like big stages and stuff uh, the Four Winds takes place in Texas in the Great Plains and anyway so we are following Elsa as you guys know and she is born into a really well-off family like they're really quite rich honestly uh, her dad sells tractors and like farm equipment in a farming town so he does really well and she is 25 so she's literally like a spinster for her age in this time frame. Um, when she was 14, she got rheumatic fever and the doctor said that her heart was really sick now and like if she strains herself or stresses out, she could die. And 10 years later, nearly 10 years later, Elsa's like, I don't think so because I'm fine. Like, I'm good, I feel fine, I feel strong. Um, she walks all the time, goes to the library, does this and that, and um, but her, her family is just like in, insistent on treating her like an outcast kind of and they kind of just use her medical condition as a ruse like and her mother literally tells her that like has told her that she's just not beautiful like the other girls uh and her mom for a while thought she would grow out of it like when she started her period and stuff but when her period came and she was still like plain and ugly her mom stopped working on her wedding gift like this traditional embroidery stuff uh that mothers used to do when and you know throughout their daughter's life to get her ready to gift her on her wedding that's what i'm trying to say and um she just kind of like put it away and didn't mention it anymore so one day she's walking to the library right and she sees a shop owner and he's like hey tell your sister that i have this new red silk fabric in and she was like show me like you know I might you know let me, let me see it and so he does and she ends up buying it and the shopkeeper assumes it's for her sister or something but she goes home makes this like beautiful dress and goes downstairs one night and is like I'm going to the speakeasy and I'm gonna listen to music and her parents are like super conservative Christians and they were like no you're not <laughs> and she actually runs away from her parents right and like goes to the speakeasy in town and of course this is during prohibition so you have to like have a password to get in there and when he recognizes that it is mr wilcott's daughter he's like no no you need to leave because uh he will literally kill me if i let you in here so she's walking down the street and then she meets this guy and um she's pretending to be confident like one of her favorite book characters and one thing leads to another and they sleep together <laughs> <laughs> what I say it literally lasted like two seconds okay like that's how it was described I laughed and um uh he's much younger he was he's 18 she's 25 and back then that's like weird but yeah so uh, a few weeks later she runs into him again at like their fourth of July gathering thing they're like I don't know they do like a big town thing so and he, she sees that he has a girl in his arm, like they're obviously together or something. So she's like, makes an excuse, to, like runs away, and he catches up to her and is like, "No, let's hang out again." And he gives her a nickname, and she's like, she's very, she's quite naive, honestly. But I don't think she's like some fragile baby that her parents um, and family treat her like that. And yeah, and they actually like call her unbecoming and ugly and stuff. So they're assholes but so they've been they start meeting up and doing the deed and then she gets sick and so her mom puts two and two together and is like have you and she was like 
oh, I wanted to tell you I was so scared. I feel so alone. Um, but she doesn't realize she's pregnant because she's so sheltered and actually naive. Like, she doesn't realize that it could happen, I guess. But, so, she's pregnant. Okay, and then her mom tells her dad, of course. And he blows up and drives her to the boy's house and is like, you she's your problem now you're no daughter of mine you take care of her since your son ruined my daughter so she literally gets left on their farm and they do get married she and her his mother is like you have to be a catholic if you want to live here and like be with my son blah blah, blah. and yeah then she has her baby uh like obviously like months later but she actually finds that she loves being on the farm because uh, at her house with her parents they had maids and her dad like sold stuff like he wasn't really like, he was working but it wasn't physical labor so her mother-in-law taught her all these things and she actually found that she liked him uh she and her husband get along wouldn't really call it love but you know it is what it is but that was 1920 one and that is where it left off uh, she had just given birth and her mother-in-law who was very upset about the situation at first has come around and after they have after she gives birth to her daughter her mother-in-law is like welcome to the family and you know both of you like we love you you know oh, very sweet so now the next chapter is starting in 1934 so yeah, that was a really long update, but I am gonna go lay down and read until my body forces me to stop reading, basically. So, I will update you guys in the morning, but I did just want to say that I'm really enjoying this book, obviously. Uh, I feel bad for Elsa for growing up in that kind of environment, but I'm happy that she's happy and she feels so loved. Um, maybe she doesn't feel loved, but she feels really happy and confident in her new role but she does feel loved by her baby. She immediately feels that bond, you know, and um, it was just a really sweet feeling, a sweet thing to read. So like I said, I'm gonna go lay down and read, but I will have an update for you in the morning. Hello friends, it is the next day, the next afternoon, actually it's about two o'clock. Let me see what page I'm on now. I'm at 128 and Wow, so a lot of things have happened. Like I told you last night, I was starting the 1934 um, part of the book, and it was definitely a like not more intense. Actually, it is more intense than the first part, because like I said in the first part, her family treated her like garbage, and you know she felt just like nothing. She felt like she didn't matter. So now she has two children. One of her well, she's had three. One was stillborn, so she has two living children. Her husband is not happy. They're all in the middle of the drought, right? No one has any money. No one has any, like hardly any food. They're all literally like dying. So earlier when I was reading, her husband was like, oh, I love you. I'm coming to bed soon. Um, I'm sorry for our argument and because he's also a drunk now, so that's good. They have no money, but he manages to like run up a tab at the local bar. But so she wakes up the next morning and he never came home, which is not abnormal. He sleeps in the barn a lot and just is so depressed and unhappy with his life, right? So she is looking all over the farm for him and she gets like this terrible feeling as she notices on the floor. Uh, because you know no matter how much you clean when there's dust all the time you can see dust she noticed that something uh next to the bed was amiss so she got down there and noticed his suitcase was missing like she could see the tracks from where he had pulled it something out from under the bed his suitcase was missing all but one of his shirts was gone the one that she made him for christmas and she went to the train station and the person working there was like yes he left and uh, he didn't tell me where he's going. He didn't have any money for a ticket, so he just jumped on a train um, heading west like he had wanted to do. And he gave her a letter, and he, yep, that's what her husband said in his letter, too. He was like, I'm sorry, I love you guys. You guys are better off without me. Uh, don't come find me. I don't know where I'll be anyways. 
So this guy just left his children, his wife, his parents, and left them to die, basically, because they have no food. Or they have very little food. They have like canned stuff from the meager crops that they get, but they're getting more and more dust storms and less and less crops. So they, everyone there is like literally going to die if something doesn't change. And he just left them for dead to starve or die of thirst, malnutrition, something bad is gonna happen. So that's where I stopped is right after she read his letter and told her kids, oh, so her daughter, her daughter is the child that she had with him first when they got married and um, she is 12 and it was said that like as soon as she turned 12 things just like changed between them which I know was like normal between mother and daughter and she just holds so much animosity towards her mother but I don't think, I know she doesn't realize that um, she doesn't know what her mother went through growing up. Okay, she doesn't know that when she, her daughter Loretta was a baby, um, her mother took her to her parents' house, took her baby, her new baby, and she was married. She felt for sure her parents would forgive her and be part of their life. And as soon as her parents opened the door, they were like, ew, get that dark-haired animos, or that dark-haired baby away from us. What a shame. So yeah, her mom was like, of course, I'm not gonna have anything to do with them because that's her baby. But that's where I'm at now. Uh, they have some big issues. And even, so after they found out he left, her daughter was like, this is all your fault, I hate you. Of course he ran away from you. Like, the meanest things? I was like, I swear. You know, it was 1934 back then. I might have whooped her ass over that. Smacked her a little bit. We got us a buddy. Anyway, so that is my update. It is a really good book. I was so heartbroken for her uh, because after her husband left, she read the note. She was, she was like, I guess my parents were right all along. Like, I don't deserve love or anything. And I was like, yes, you do, Elsa. You deserve everything. Don't think that. So that's where I'm at. And now we're having reading hour. Well, Kai's eating a cookie, but he's about to practice his letters. Claire and I are reading for an hour. And yeah, we just finished our chores, so I'm gonna read for an hour and then play some Minecraft later, I think, but definitely wanna keep reading because it's so good and it's going by so fast. All right, update time again. So it is now, I don't know, we finished our little reading hour and I'm on page, I wanna say 200 or really close to it, 192. I just finished 192 and I'm about to start the next year. Um, I really do like, whoop, I like how she has these like sectioned off some. So that was a whirlwind of a year, okay? It was crazy. Like I said, her husband, Rafe, their father left, okay? And then nothing really improved, okay? So they had winter and then they were like, listen, the spring we know we're gonna get rain. I can feel it in my bones. And then the government decided uh, FDR was going to, you know, help people out who were suffering, who were dying. Sorry, hold on. And so he offered them $16 per head for any livestock that they wanted to sell. And uh, they asked everyone to, basically they were gonna pay the farmers to not farm anything in the next year. It's an ecological issue. They were kind of destroying their land by doing too much tilling and like, I don't remember exactly the details, but it was partially on the farmers. They didn't know they were causing damage, but it, it, you know, the way they were farming wasn't um, stable. That was their offer and then spring started and they got rain, like they legit got rain. And it was just such a happy moment for them and it just felt so good. I was so happy and excited. And it rained for like 24 hours and their crops turned green as they were growing up. And then a few days later it was, 
like 100 degrees in March and it was like an eight day heat 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 wave killed all the baby crops and the dust storm started coming more and more frequently and lasting longer instead of like an hour the next one lasted like eight days and her son couldn't breathe so at the end of it he was like I, I can't breathe you know he could he could barely get the words out so they rushed him to the Red Cross makeshift hospital that they had made in town and their horse had died so she put him in a wheelbarrow and started pushing him alone and she was obviously hysterical okay I mean I would be too your son like can't breathe and you you have to go two miles on foot oh yeah that would be rough so after about a mile um she noticed you know her in-laws were with her and they were like let us help we've been screaming for you to listen and you were so focused on helping your son like let me push it's fine and so they get him there and he has dust pneumonia because in the dust there's like bacterial particles and he breathed too much of it in and he's got pneumonia now uh an infectious like bacterial pneumonia so that's not good he almost died uh he does get better though and um this was like elsa's breaking point she was like i have to leave i'm i'm going to california i'm leaving i i it's actually gonna kill my son and like i'm done and so they get everything ready they have a full tank of gas in their car they do have a vehicle but gas is way too expensive um but anyway so they get everything all ready and um the time comes and her in-laws are like uh we can't go with you we can't leave this land the government's gonna pay us we'll get by we have a little bit of food we'll be fine you take the car and i gave you some money you've got food so they just left oh my gosh it broke my heart um yeah after aunt was her son's name is aunt well his name is anthony but they call him aunt after her son was healthy enough to travel she that's when they were leaving and yeah it's just really heartbreaking honestly she just her husband left her and then she left her in-laws like she had no choice it was her son his life was literally on the line so i hate it it broke my heart her in-laws were just everything they were so sweet um and now she's like going on her own with two kids and yeah it's just heartbreaking chris and hannah is really good at breaking your heart i'm gonna be honest it's quite painful but uh that's my update for now i'm gonna like force myself to put the book down i want to keep reading but no <laughs> i need to go do the dishes that i've accumulated today with the kids and I don't know probably find something else to clean <laughs> but anyways i will see you guys in a little bit hello i just had to go back and look at my previous clip to see what i had talked about and i haven't talked to you since chapter 17. i'm now on chapter 29 so it's been a while i thought i did one more update but obviously i didn't so that was my bad uh so the last time you guys knew they were just on their way to california so they arrived in california Elsa had worried about her truck breaking down in the desert, which it did, it did, um, because of the heat, even though she drove at night, it still was too much for, you know, a 1920s car truck. So it did break down, but she just put more water in the radiator and they made it, they made it to California. And so they of course were like, thank goodness. Okay. Let me just find this. Let me find a job and then we can live somewhere and um they end up staying at a kind of encampment where a lot of the other settlers drifters people fleeing their shattered lives you know from the dust storm or just poverty like they all a lot of people came to california and so there was like this huge roadside kind of village but like everyone was living in tents and that's where they set up and Elsa promised her children that they would just be there for one night she would work the next day 
earn enough money to move um, along a little bit more. So she found a job the next day, worked for eight hours at scrubbing floors and like dusting and cleaning and doing laundry. And she earned a 40 cents. And now back then you guys know the dollar was different. It was worth a lot more. You could go a lot farther on a dollar, but 40 cents was still nothing. That was two gallons of gas back then and not enough money okay so she kind of panicked and she had a little money left and she was like i could either save it for food because obviously i'm gonna need to save every penny i can and try to survive somehow working crappy jobs that don't pay or to blow all their money on the motels and stuff so uh, she decided that they would have to stay and her daughter was not pleased about that but you know things happen so they end up staying at this encampment and <clears throat> she's told by some of the other people she actually makes a friend her name is Jean and she was like you need to go sign up for the relief act because they'll give you money so she goes to sign up she's told you have to be a California resident which doesn't happen for a full year after arriving so she has to make life work somehow for a year and they manage but it's honestly like so difficult there's even a there's a flash flood they pick cotton and they do earn some money but it's never enough to get ahead never it's only enough to just barely eat to survive and then there's a flash flood so obviously they came from texas and there was the dust bowl it was a huge drought no water and then they're in california where it literally stormed so hard one night there was a flash flood that wiped away everything including her tin can of money they had nothing except the truck she did pull it out before it was ruined by the rain and um the clothes on her back so then in comes jack jack is this guy he comes and he helps them all get out of um the encampment you know he's helping people pulling them out of the water the rising water and he's setting them up in boarded up places that are actually owned by this organization that's trying to help people instead of make them feel like garbage because people of california are treating them so badly like so mean when elsa went to her first job that day she made 40 cents the lady who employed her she was like mama why is the dirty girl looking at me and the lady elsa was cleaning for said don't look at them and don't even come near them they carry bugs and like diseases like she's some rabid dog or something like and the kids at school were so mean to aunt and loretta and oh, i was awful so after the flash flood though jack helps them takes them to a hotel and says you know this night is fine it's on me and then the next day he drives them to another place okay um and they get to actually live in a cabin now the only problem with the setup is that it's all on credit so they get to live in the cabin for six dollars a month and they have a little like grocery store there on site Plus, you have to pay $3 for water and electricity, but it's all uh, on credit for the people who own this farm. And the only way to pay it down is by picking cotton for them every year. So she, like, as they're living in this cabin, it had been there one year. And so, you know, she went and she got $13, which back then was a lot. So she went and was like, I'd like to pay down some of my debt with this money. And he was like, we don't accept cash. And she was like, what do you mean? Like, what do you accept then? And he goes, work, that's it. Like, you pay it off by picking cotton and like how much uh, cotton you can pick and stuff. But so it's kind of like in today's society, some, some places are just impossible to get ahead at you know you're on credit and you're living and you're working but it's still not enough like she's gonna be indebted to them forever but that's the point they live there and pay these crazy prices at this local grocery store because they have no money 
but it all goes on credit and the only way to pay the creditor is by working at ridiculous rates of course like they're not being actually paid i don't think they work towards their debt anyways that was a long explanation, but that is where I'm at. I'm on 362 and there's only 447 pages. So I have only like 80 pages left. I'm going to sit and finish it right now. But I just have a lot of things that I want to resolve and I have a feeling they're not. And I want Ella and Jack to be together, but we'll see. I have a feeling I'm going to cry. So that'll be fun. We'll see how this goes. Hello, it's me same spot different day though and actually looking kind of cute and put together i just recorded my june wrap up and i needed to wrap up this vlog too um so after once again reviewing my previous clips i have to talk about like the last 80 pages can i do it yes of course but the real question is did chris and hannah make me cry and the answer is yes Yes, I'll insert a photo here of me crying because she just destroys people in actually not always the best way. Okay, let's get to that. Let's get to that. So the last hundred pages, right? I mean, ish, like 80, whatever pages it was. The camps and the workers were starting to talk about riots or striking actually they were gonna go on strike because um they were tired of working for free they were and i mean obviously we don't blame them or i shouldn't say for free because they got paid but like i said before they were in so much debt to welty and his farms that they would never get out they were ready to strike uh, the problem is that other people were like yeah it's cool i'll take the job for half of what you pay them i don't care uh, this entire time lareda is like we need to go on strike we need to show them we won't work for free and elsa has always just been like no stick to the rules any money is better than none haven't you learned that by now and then the day finally comes when they can get their uh, state relief like they get money every month from the government and so they go she goes in and she gets her first month and then the next month she goes in and mr welty's there and he is standing there and um when it gets to elsa's turn in line she, he's like yep she works for me so everyone who's working picking cotton no longer gets that state money because they're working and everyone's like outraged because they're like we can't afford this like we have to we need the money we need to buy milk for not that much as like as much as he's charging and that's the point that's why welty is pushing for this because he wants them under his thumb and then her friend jean dies from the homeless camp where they all met before the flood and they became friends and became really close uh she dies um, and so after that, Elsa snaps and that's when they decide to strike, go on strike officially. But after meetings and Jack talking to them, hyping them up, they all finally, finally decided to go on strike. And so they did finally and it was amazing so what they did is they walked into the fields and sat down so that way no one knew could come in and pick because they were all sitting there in front of the cotton like throughout the fields blocking their way uh there was no way to get in and pick around them and so that was the first day but they knew the second day was gonna be hell like they were there was gonna be hell to pay for that so, so after the strike, actually, uh, they all get eviction notices saying they're being kicked out, basically. And that night, uh, the same night that they get the eviction notice, Jake or Jack comes. He gets word from one of his many people, right, that he has all over the country. Basically, little spies and informants that something bad is going to happen 
at the wealthy farms so he sneaks in even he's not supposed to be there because wealthy has already threatened to like shoot him and gets them and he's like come with me like we have to go to a hotel um don't worry i've got a place for us to stay um but we have to go because shit's about to go down and as they're like getting their few belongings together to leave if things do start going down you can hear people busting down doors and they've got guns and they're like forcing people to leave really scary so they go and they go to a hotel and okay so jack and elsa spend the night together and it's just beautiful and uh well her kids get their own room obviously they're not gonna like be in the same room but the next day the plan is to uh strike again and it's gonna be more dangerous because they're ready for it now so when they get to the fields uh there's a barricade and uh the owner of the farm wealthy is like unless you're willing to pick for like 70 cents now it used to be a dollar which was in and of itself ridiculous a dollar for a pound of or for a a bag of cotton which was like a hundred pounds so now it's like 70 cents a pound or per bag 70 cents for every hundred pounds and they were like what like you're just punishing us now some people start to crack and they're like okay okay we will work for that it's fine uh you know sorry to the cause they're like sorry jack we can't do this um we need this money we need to feed our families which is understandable it's like a hard hard place to be in you need to feed your families but you want the right thing done uh and so people start moving forward and they're like yep i'm gonna pick for you i'll work for you uh because the, the wealthy's like i will straight shoot you if you come onto my property and don't work so they're like oh, okay we'll work right and no one's listening but so elsa jumps up on the back of the truck that jack drove them in and gives a speech about like what's right and what's wrong of course and it's a moving speech and reminding them why they started to strike and protest for their families for food like enough food to survive and not be not a slave because that's not right at all slaves didn't even get this good of a treatment but to not be used and taken advantage of um to not be the scapegoat because they're treated like shit um for working and doing their job uh but because they came from out of state they're they're still treated like dogs well worse than that they're treated like like fleas on a dog and it's just not right you know before that it was the mexicans and they got the mexicans deported but now they're looking for another scapegoat but they want cheap labor but they just want to blame other americans for taking good jobs you know kind of still the same deal <laughs> but anyway so she gives a speech and uh people are like yeah okay okay she's right she's right let's stay strong and then um vigilantes vigilante officers so like not real officers of law but like wannabes show up and they shoot elsa i know you're probably like what yeah, they shoot Elsa, and not a fatal blow, um, but enough um, that she's like bleeding out everywhere, and uh, she wakes up in the hospital, and her two kids are there, of course, and Jack, and they're crying, and she's like, it's, it's okay, everything's okay, and um, Jack tells her, she, he's like, the doctors say there's something wrong with your heart which is what her family told her growing up and she thought that they were wrong that her heart was strong and um that you know it was just their way to control her but it turns out she really did have something wrong with her heart like it was weak maybe a murmur or something they didn't actually specify but there's something wrong with her heart they were like um she's gonna die from this uh they fixed her up the best they could but they were like she's not going to come back for this she can't survive so it ended up being a fatal shot it just didn't kill her right away um but that moment okay in the hospital when she's talking to her kids that killed me i mean could you imagine i know people get sentences 
like, um, it, they're like, okay, you have cancer, you're gonna die, yada yada. But like, I don't know, something about this just hit me different because she was literally fine that morning and then got shot and then they were like, yeah, she's about to die. Like, she's on the verge of death. Um, they were surprised she even gained consciousness, so. Her kids were obviously crying. Um, her daughter was like, mom, I can't live without you. And Elsa was like, yes, you can. You're strong, you're amazing. Look at what you've accomplished. Like, you fought for what was right. I shouldn't have like not listened to you for so long. And you are amazing. I just wish I had more time. Oh my gosh, there was a line in here. Oh my God, I'll find it in a minute. But that made me just so upset. And then what killed me? I'll say that for last. So Jack was of course like, I love you. I love you. I wish we had more time together too. And and then her son, Anthony, who they called Ant, so little Ant, came over to her and was like, Mommy, I don't leave me. Please don't leave me yet. And that that's what got me. Like literally I was crying. Like <laughs> it was heartbreaking i can't imagine knowing you're gonna die and like hearing your child beg you to stay <sighs> any at any age but especially when they're younger like that i mean yeah it it really fucked me up i'm gonna be honest it really got me it's, i do want to tell you guys that quote i was talking about this is before she died um this was right before the strike started so she wrote in her journal love is what remains when everything else is gone this is what i should have told my children when we left texas what will i tell them tonight not that they will understand yet how could they i am 40 years old and i only just learned this fundamental truth myself love in the best of times it is a dream in the worst of times a salvation I am in love there it is I've written it down so I soon I will say it aloud to him I am in love a as crazy and ridiculous and impossible as it sounds I am in love and I am loved in return and this love gives me the courage I need for today the four winds have blown us here people from all across the country to the ver the very edge of this great land and now at last we make our stand fight for what we know to be right we fight for our American dream that it will be possible again. Jack says that I am a warrior and while I don't believe it, I know this. A warrior believes in an end and she can't see and fights for it. A warrior never gives up. A warrior fights for those weaker than herself. It sounds like motherhood to me. It's true. I did want to tell you there was one part that Oh, yeah, this part. Okay, let's try to keep it together. So it says, she thought she had a lifetime to show them her love. Time. Hers had gone too fast. She'd only just discovered who she was. She had counted on a lifetime to teach her children what they needed to know, but she didn't have that gift of grace and time. Still, she had given them what mattered they were loved and they knew it everything else was decoration love remains anyways so that's that's it and then jack offers to drive her body back to texas uh because they're gonna obviously live with their grandparents now it has been over a year so the doctor had said to keep aunt out of the dust bowl for a year plus things were picking back up in texas um they had some green again and they had rain but jack drove the kids and elsa's casket back to texas and it ended with elsa or lareda elsa's daughter at the graveside with her grandmother and she's getting ready to go to college just like her mom always had a hope for her but golly i just i can't it honestly it it wasn't even a good cry you know what i'm saying like it was devastating but why do i like it so much like 
yeah hurt me i like it that's so weird but that is it for this vlog that is it for this book it is so good um if you had any doubt about reading it throw that doubt away and go get this book you need to right now but that is gonna be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it probably really long sorry but i will see you guys in my next video and let me know if there are any reading vlogs that you want to see coming up and i will look into them i will talk to you guys later bye